What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. I've been talking for a while about some of the people bringing rock back in the mainstream, right? So MGK was probably the first one. Uh, he went to number one with tickets for my downfall. Nobody likes MGK, so people were quick to discredit him and say that it's not a revival. And even if he did go to number one, well, that's not helping rock. It's this usual thing where everyone says they want rock to be more popular again. But then when somebody makes it more popular, they find a reason to be unhappy about it. But it's not just him. It's more than just him. I think Olivia Rodrigo is the next one to get really, really, really big. She went to number one. Well, well Driver's License was not a rock song, um, but her album has rock songs on it. For example, Good For You. She has another song on that album called Brutal, which I think sounds like a K Records or Kill Rock Stars, like Riot Girl song, Riot Girl song from 1993. <laughs> We're not here to litigate the credibility of these people based on whether they miked the snare on the album or whether they wrote every word to every song. The larger point here is to say, is rock culturally relevant again? Whether she wrote this, whether MGK wrote everything, that, that doesn't matter. And, and, if, and if you're focusing on that, you're missing the point. What, what I want to talk about here is the fact that rock is very clearly back in the mainstream. You know, this is not fucking Gojira or something. Nobody's saying that. But this is a rock song. And she is like the biggest fucking thing on the planet. Driver's License was like the biggest debut song ever or something, or at least of the streaming era. Isn't this just the Mud Honey Pump It Up riff? This same riff has probably been used by like 500 bands. I mean, it's not exactly rocket science. I, I probably wrote this riff when I was 14 too. Whether you like this song or not is secondary. This is very clearly a rock song that totally sounds like it could be from 1993. And Olivia Rodrigo is fucking huge. And the, we know the way that this stuff works. Kids get into this, you know, there's gateway bands, just like all of you guys watching this got into, you know, this stuff from Green Day or Linkin Park or, you know, Skillet or whatever it was. And then you got a little bit and you were like, this is cool. Who are their influences? And then you found, you know, you went the next layer down on the iceberg and eventually you got to Gojira and Real Friends and fucking whatever other weird shit you're into. This is how it works. So. We should be excited if you care about, you know, rock in general being more popular. You should be excited to see MGK. You should be excited to see Olivia Rodrigo. The Olivia Rodrigo to Infinite Annihilator pipeline. Exactly. Uh, well, Jarrett's got a point here. The reason it won't be accepted is because she is a she. Rock don't like she's. Well, that is a fact. I made a whole video about that, um, so I won't I won't belabor that point here, but th that's a fact. And she is a massive, massive, massive star. She is not the next big thing. She is the current big thing. And if she sticks around, she could be the next Billie Eilish. Speaking of Billie Eilish, she has a new album called Happier Than Ever uh, and a new look. And it looks like it is going to be number one, and it has some rock stuff on it. I mean, I'm going to skip the first part of it because it's really long. The first part of it's kind of mellow, but the second half of it, you know, really sounds a whole lot like the Black Parade. So here's the first part. What you expect from Billie Eilish, ASMR core. Halfway through, we get to this. D did she say she hates this city? I hope she did. I hope Billie Eilish is secretly going to make a 2013 Tumblr pop punk album. You're right. And she's got the metalcore video trope. Just needs uh, Danny Warsnop in the background here screaming some misogynist slogan. I mean, she's really good in this video. Like, she needs to do movies. The lyric is, you made me hate this city. But what about your friends? What about pizza? That's what we need to know, Billy. So this is gonna go number one. You can see here. I mean, and it's a great song. Welcome. Oh, Nick, thank you for the raid. Much appreciated. We love Nick. I think it's smart that she made this move. 
because she needs to be more than just ASMR core. I know some people were saying like that her new song, A Lost Cause, was like, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's just kind of more of the same from Billy. She needs to do something different, which I, I agree with. Um, so she did something different. So I think it's a smart move for her. Billy Eilish is the Haley Williams. She's more popular than Haley. She's she's maybe like the Gwen Stefani of this generation. So we know that there is going to be a Billy Eilish to Infant Annihilator pipeline. We know that there's going to be all kinds of kids that get into this stuff. And it's very important that there's so many women that are leading the way on this, I think. Halsey, Miley Cyrus, Billy, and Olivia Rodrigo, because we know that rock has been a total sausage fest for like 10, 15 years or something like that. It being a bunch of like dudes with leather jackets or denim jackets and beards at every show is, you know, I'm not putting those people down, but that's not healthy for the genre. You don't want it to be a sausage party. So I think it's super important that we're getting some female energy in here. Yes, the Halsey Trent Reznor album, this legitimately sounds like stoner, like sludge. I'm not even exaggerating or joking. This like sounds like you could be on Southern Lord. I'm not joking. Practically like Electric Wizard or something. The, a blood incantation featuring Billie Eilish. This is happening. Like, this is for real happening. I, I'm not reaching. I know sometimes people say that I, I'm I'm reaching and I'm making a big deal out of nothing. This is not nothing. Olivia Rodrigo is the biggest goddamn star on the planet right now. Billie Eilish is going to be like the next fucking you know, Madonna. She is going to be a gigantic, massive, like generational star. Next Lady Gaga. Halsey is a big star. You know, there's MGK too. This stuff is officially back in the mainstream. None of this shit where you go, that's not really rock. Listen to this shit. It sounds like fucking Electric Wizard. There is no way you can deny that. And then Miley Cyrus, you know, did her uh, her Metallica shit. She had that, what, what's the name of her rock album? <laughs> What, what I want to know about are what are like the second order effects of this? I wouldn't necessarily listen to this stuff myself, but it's it's also not for me. I mean, I'm an old man. Uh, I, I'm not Olivia Rodrigo or Billie Eilish, Eilish's target audience. But what I want to know is what happens next. Like the kid who decided to buy a guitar or decided to like learn how to make music because he or she was really stoked on good for you what happens in a year or two from now on soundcloud and whatever like in the diy kind of world what what's going to happen there that's what i'm interested in um not just musically but culturally too let's say a bunch of young girls come into the scene through this stuff they're not going to put up with bullshit from dudes gatekeeping them and being dicks and saying dumb misogynist shit in their lyrics like metalcore bands did years ago. This is not an option. They're not going to put up with it. I do have to say you probably have a U.S. perspective on this. I'm quite confident a lot of these artists are now being played a lot in Europe. I don't know what that means. I do have a U.S. perspective on that on this. And the reason why is because the United States is the global leader in pop culture. I know Europeans don't like it when I say this, but it's true. We export pop culture more than anybody else. Korea is probably number two. And Korean stuff is largely a copy of Western stuff. Uh, I'm not putting anyone else down or anything like that. And, and I understand that bands play these huge festivals in Europe, blah, 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 blah. But America exports pop culture. That's just a fact. In any case, what's cool is that this is happening. And I'm excited to see what happens next. We need a breath of fresh air that's not just fucking dudes with beards genting. I've complained about this forever, so I'm not going to do it more. But this feels like it could be, you know, the thing that might change that a little bit. And I hope it is. I think it's cool. Um, I am on Team Olivia. I'm on Team Billy. Uh, I'm on Team Halsey. I'm excited to see it.